A lot of people ask me where the fuck I've been at the last few years. Shit, I don't know. But I do know. I'm back now. <laughs> What's up, everyone? Adquid Orator here. And I don't know how many of you know this about me, but I'm a real big-time environmentalist. And as such, today is a pretty, shall we say, special day for me. Not just because it's Labor Day, which really doesn't have that much to do with environmentalism, uh, but because today is the centennial of the extinction of the passenger pigeon. For those of you who don't know, the passenger pigeon at the beginning of the 19th century was the most abundant bird on the planet, with as many as 5 billion living across eastern North America. It was said that the passenger pigeon flocks were so numerous that they could literally darken the skies for hours, and if one of these flocks was to roost over a stretch of forest, it would look like it had snowed from all the droppings. But because they were so numerous, the passenger pigeons were viewed as an inexhaustible resource and relentlessly hunted. By the middle of the 19th century, their numbers had begun to decline, and legislation was brought forth to the Ohio State Legislature, uh, hoping to give them legal protection, but this was declined. And after the American Civil War, they underwent a catastrophic decline because of all the increased railroads. They can now uh, transport the bodies of the pigeons all over the country, creating thus a huge market for pigeon meat. And there was widespread development across the country at that time, and hence massive deforestation, destroying the pigeons' natural uh, nesting grounds. And by the 1890s, the passenger pigeons were very rare, but the slaughter continued. I mean, Michigan did pass some legislature uh, prohibiting uh, hunting near the nesting grounds, uh, but this was weakly enforced and really did nothing. The last wild specimen was shot by an Ohio farm boy back in uh, March 22, 1900, and after that only a small captive flock remained. But the passenger pigeon needed to be in massive colonies in order to initiate uh, reproduction, so there really wasn't anything the scientists could do with a small captive flock, and they slowly uh, withered away until there was only one left, and that one individual was named Martha, and she lived in the uh, Cincinnati Zoo. And she passed away on the 1st of September, 1914, at 9.32 a.m. So this was very symbolic because it was an extinction that you could put in an exact time and place to. If you go to the Cincinnati Zoo, you can uh, still see her aviary, although it's a memorial now. And there's a life-size statue of her outside. So I think it's a good time to ask if a hundred years on, have we actually learned our lesson uh, from what happened to the passenger pigeons? Because, quite frankly, I really don't see it. I mean, right now, the oceans are being uh, basically depleted. Uh, pretty much all s commercial fish species have been overfished. And their populations have crashed. Uh, their genetic diversity is very low. And many speculate that by 2050, uh, the oceans will be empty. And here on land, we're squandering uh, large amounts of water reserves and cropland just to grow the excess of uh, crops that you need to feed the animals to grow meat. I mean, just look at our farmlands. Uh... Back in the 1970s, the soil was black, it was rich, it was full of uh, organic materials. Uh, now it's pretty gray and desolate, it, and it's heavily depleted of minerals. Um, also, a lot of the aquifers that we use to water the crops are being depleted faster than they can be replenished. And this is a real serious problem. Because there's a report issued by the Stockholm International Institute of Hydrology, uh, I'll put the link in the description box, that basically said that if worldwide we continue to deplete our uh, fresh water reserves the way we're doing now, 
By the year 2050, there probably won't be enough water to feed the 9 billion people who are going to live on the planet. And that's the fucking thing, because uh, something I hear a lot is people saying in a hundred years' time, we may very well look back on the way we treat animals now, like how we view how blacks were treated back in slavery now. And there's a lot of people who get offended by that and say, oh, how could you be so offensive as to uh, compare eating meat to slavery or compare animals to human beings, although human beings are animals. And I know someone who said that I guarantee you within our lifetime there will be a demand for meat. But if the article I posted is to be believed, it may not matter whether there's a demand for meat or not. Ironically, any more than it mattered if there was a demand for passenger pigeon or not at the turn of the last century. I mean, if we can't grow enough crops to feed the world's population and grow enough to feed the animals at the same time, it's not going to matter if there's any demand for meat, just as... If there's no more passenger pigeons left, it doesn't matter if there's any demand for passenger pigeon meat. And if we can't grow enough food to feed the world's population because we squandered the farmland and fresh water reserves, then the people who are going to be born, at least within my lifetime, uh, wouldn't necessarily view us the way we view the people back in the uh, 19th century for the way they treated minorities like uh, blacks or Native Americans, they're going to be way more fucking furious. Because they are going to be the ones who will suffer the consequences of our irresponsibility. So it's no longer a question of people born after we're gone thinking, oh, how could they have treated animals that way? It's a matter of those not yet born but whom many of us could face within our lifetime, asking, how could you have condemned so many to starve for no other purpose than your fucking palate pleasure? Now, am I saying that this is necessarily going to happen? No. Because, like people have said time and time again, many have forecasted these Malthusian catastrophes where uh, there's simply no longer enough food to feed the population, but these ended up not happening. True, but there are still some times where the population, as well as uh, resource exhaustion, overstretched the capacity of the land to feed the general population and massive famine resulted. So it's not something that necessarily will happen, but it's not something that can't happen either. Also, we're overusing antibiotics in the factory farms, which is causing an increase the amounts of antibiotic resistant bacteria in the uh, meats. And to all the carnists out there who constantly bitch and moan about how they're tired of all these vegans and vegetarians trying to force their views down their throat, know that as long as we continue to deplete the farmlands faster than they can be replenished in order to grow the excess corn and soy uh, needed to feed the cows so you can have that thick juicy steak and as long as we continue to uh, overfish the oceans faster than they can be replenished so you can enjoy that delicious deep fried cod the only thing forcing veganism on you is your own indifference and lack of foresight because well it takes Five times as much water to get one calorie from meat as it does from plants. Uh, we're using fresh water reserves faster than they can be replenished. All the while the population is growing. Uh, add up those three facts and you tell me what the fuck is going to end up happening if we continue down this road. And that's not some fucking hypothetical scenario either. In 2012... Uh, meat production took a sudden downturn. I mean, it did peak in the year 2007 because uh, after that, demand started slowly dropping at right around 2% per year. But in 2012, it dropped twice as fast, not because uh, there wasn't a demand for meat. It's just 
in the wake of the water shortages we experienced that year, there just wasn't enough crops to feed all those animals. Also, as a little side note, this does create a strange and pretty paradoxic situation where in which if you want to keep eating meat, you would want more and more people to become vegan and vegetarian. So if you ever do meet one of these preachy, in-your-face vegans, you know, your gut reaction might be just to, you know, shut them down. But consider that. I mean, hell, if you love meat that much, you might as well go out and pretend to be one of those people. And this is exactly where history is starting to repeat itself, because you don't think that back in the late 1800s, there were people who were very outspoken against the slaughter of passenger pigeons, and you don't think there were some people who were just considered normal people back then who were uh, just going about eating passenger pigeon meat, who were saying things like, oh, mind your own business, uh, what I eat is not your business, and no one will ever make me stop eating passenger pigeon. Well, someone did. That someone was themselves. Because, you know, they were the reason that they were all gone. They hunted them to extinction. Just like now we're basically fishing the oceans into desolation, just like we're overusing our croplands, uh, causing large areas to become desertified. And it's not just about, you know, animal rights, it's also about other environmental issues, like uh, people who drive those big Hummers who really have no use for them, but who just buy them to show off. And these vehicles also use a ton of gas, and they always complain about environmentalists um, trying to tell them what they can and can't drive, and trying to force their views on them. But guess what? If we continue to use all the uh, hydrocarbon fuels that we're using, and we continue to pump so much greenhouse gas into the atmosphere, we may reach a point where we either A, deplete the Earth's energy reserves, or we'll pump so much gas into the atmosphere that we can't pump any more without resulting in severe climate troubles. In that case, uh, they will be forced to uh, stop driving their Hummers or just about any fancy vehicle and cut down and start using basically public transportation. Not because of what the environmentalists did, but because of their own indifference. But, you know, going back to the depletion of the farmlands and the uh, emptying of the oceans, I guess you can pretty much say that Martha's ghost has come back to haunt us. And, you know, there's that old saying, uh, you know, it's cliche, but it's fucking true. Uh, those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. And, quite frankly, I don't think we have learned uh, from what happened to these animals a century ago. And, you know, people... People just have to fucking wake up and realize what they're doing uh, affects others. It's not inconsequential. And realize that, you know, we're part of this earth. We're dependent on this earth. This earth isn't dependent on us, though. And just, you know, take more fucking responsibility for their actions. And I guess that's all I gotta say. Peace out. Disappeared, don't wonder how Looking for me, I'm underground